Data dot, come on, you know you want a data dot, bro. Yeah. Welcome to the musket guide. This is going to be uh, covering everything you need to know about playing musket uh, But not covering anything related to getting a build for musket. I've already made videos on those 
and I think that is the first thing we'll quickly discuss before jumping into everything else. So first off, you need to decide which musket build you want to go with. Now I've got my website linked in the description. It currently has five musket builds on it. There's going to be two builds that I recommend in here that are standout performers. They're obviously being the classic musket rapier, which is going to have the most in-depth breakdowns throughout this video because it has the most to learn. And then there's going to be musket void gauntlet, which is probably the highest DPS musket setup currently in the game. And probably a third slightly coming in behind those two is the Musket Boltcaster. Currently the Boltcaster is soft locked. If you're watching this ahead of the video, it might be re-enabled. It might be good to go for the double range setup. Uh, beyond that, Fire Staff and Spear Musket are very single target or very unique niche builds that are more fun than they are competitive. So I want to make that uh, point clear. Uh, you will see that when clicking on them that I've given them a rating that they're not the greatest in terms of PvP. Or if we go to something like the VG, it's got four stars because it is a standout and is very good in PvP. So we're going to be going through the musket uh, rapier uh, mostly through this video. And to start off with, I need you guys to pick which build you want to uh, go for and uh, effectively what build you wish to focus on and improve with. So this is again going to lend sort of into the crafting guide which is coming at the end of this week in the next four days. Uh, if you, again, if you're watching in the future, I will have the crafting guide pinned in the description. So if you're a new player, you know exactly how to craft your gear or get your named items, artifacts and all that kind of stuff. And again, using my website uh, as a tool to help you decide. The first thing we want to sort of uh, look at is the ability rotations when it comes to musket right so i'm just going to jump in game here so, to sort of show you these ability rotations right now we spec into my opinion one of the best musket builds it is the stopping powder power it is the most effective and it's the best especially when tied with musket rapier which has the most to learn so first off we're going to start with the quick uh, sort of combo when it comes to these abilities if you watch my musket guide you probably already know about this but the general best combo when it comes to these three abilities is always engage with powder. This is also universal across every musket build. Is power is always your opener. So we're going to apply that and that's going to apply a certain ability called backdraft. Which is this one right here. This means every consecutive hit is going to deal 12 additional damage on that target that is burning. This is why you can opt to have burning on your ring instead of bloodletting. Personally bloodletting is better because we're using this with the finisher which has finishes harmony which is a fantastic perk and actually just gives us 15 percent more damage as well on top of our burning the next step is to shoot a power shot so we're going to go power or sorry powder power roll for the attack reload and then power shots this means we uh, can fire three shots without having to do a reload animation at all we're gonna wait for my ability to come back off rotation but this effectively allows us to shoot all three shots with one dodge and zero reloads. So again, you open with powder, shoot powder, or power stopping, sorry, and then power shot, and you get an instant triple shot combo off. This is the most effective combo that you can pull off when it comes to doing a duelist uh, build or doing a duelist playstyle. Uh, the next sort of uh, trick we're gonna cover is quickly over the rapier, because it is a sort of important DPS option. Uh, really, uh, you want to keep Fletch up at all times as your sort of mobility get away. Uh, evade is going to be one of your main uh, DPS abilities. And then uh, Flourish is also going to be one of your uh, very important engages. You can use it as a mobility ability and, you know, switch between two targets. But the way that I love to use Flourish and Finish is to trick my opponent and do an evade cancel. So we're going to wait for that to come back on cooldown here so I can show you that cancel. And again, that, that musket uh, combo is powder burn, stopping power, attack reload, so power shots. It's that simple, and that is, uh, again, a fantastic, uh, one of the best combos with the setup. So again, you press flourish, and you're only going to do the flourish ability. You're not going to go into the stagger finish, or flourish and finish, sorry. You're just going to do a flourish, then you're going to press evade and light attack once after the evade to do the omnidirectional. Just like that so in that in that quick sort of animation cancel we both did the flourish and evade and a light attack because with evade it actually speeds up our next uh hits so it also gives us uh, increased damage on evade on our next hit but it also speeds up our next attack 
So see, uh, you can see it here. Light attacks made during evade are performed exceptionally fast. So again, I'm going to show that one more time. Flourish. And then evade light attack. So that is one of my favorite sort of DPS rapier combos that you can pull off. Uh, now we're going to cover the shooter stance build. So we're going to quickly spec into that here. If you want to know the trees that you you want to use or need to use for your build, follow the crafting guide. Use my website for musket rapier. We're using this stopping power power tree, which I've currently got in game. And then for the, um, we'll go to, I believe it's void gauntlet, is the shooter stance tree. I absolutely love the shooter stance tree. I think it's fantastic. I think it's very underrated. Um, so again, we're just going to pick up the first two talents here. You don't need this one because a lot of uh, players actually have 250 con. And I believe that buff gives you, a, I think something around 30% mitigated damage on first hit with a 60 second cooldown. So half the time, uh, you actually use power shot on a full health target. There's a chance, a very high chance, it's going to mitigate all that work you put into buffing it anyways. And again, mentioning this as before, you should never be using power shot as an opener in the first place. Right, so now that we're specced into the shooter stance tree, the fantastic thing about the shooter's tree, and especially when paired with the VG, which we'll quickly chuck on here, because we do need to show those combos as well if you're using the Life Taker Plague setup on my website. This is the Musket Life Taker, again, one of the high DPS builds in the game. One of the more important things that you need to note is that you can use Power Shot and Powder Burn in shooter stance. So we can go shooter stance, initiate with Powder Burn on the first shot, Power shot on the second shot, and now consecutive shots all have that insane amount of empower. We're quite literally through the empower cap by an absurd amount. Um, and again, being able to use both those shots in shooter stance is absolutely insane. And not only that, if we're shooting into a clump, which is what this build can be very good for, is if we have that headshot perk on that reduces our cooldown, this is going to reduce our ability uh, CD by 10%. So if we're pumping into a clump, there's a very high chance that we're going to get CD. Look at how quickly our cooldowns are going down. It's pretty uh, underrated, and I think it's a very, very strong on this certain build. Now, when it comes to the VG, we have a few tricks up our sleeve. We have Tether, and on our Life Taker itself, we actually have Slowing Tether. This is effectively like uh, Crippling Powder on Musket. It provides a 42% slow on hit for 3 seconds, which is absolutely insane and can be lead to some very disgusting combos so in new world there is this thing where nameplates effectively are always showing uh so effectively unless they're lying down you can always see a player's nameplate when you're looking near them uh so this is uh, introduces a method called nameplate aiming uh, which is a very common uh, technique that a lot of uh, Dex players have been using for years. Uh, and this is generally where a lot of the accusations come from, is let's say you're crouching or standing behind a wall. I'm going to be able to pre-fire you and get a really nasty shot on you because I know you're there and I know exactly when you're going to peek because I have perfect reaction time because I can easily predict your movement unless you decide to lie down and to be a bit more unpredictable and is what i like to call nameplate shooting so whenever i play musket or ranged i'm not actually shooting at the player i'm shooting at the nameplate because the nameplate is always visible unless they're lying down and i'm looking at them so lying down is the only true way to hide a nameplate in new world other than that you can always see the nameplate if you're looking at them the general amount of nameplates i have enabled in game is 10. Uh, 10 to 9 is my general like favorite amount is you know two groups uh and you know that seems to work the best for me so again i usually tend to aim just below the nameplate and that lends usually to the easiest way to aim and know where to hit it's called nameplate aiming now i'm going to bring up an example here is called battlefield doritos now if you play battlefield 4 you know about the doritos that are above your nameplate it's something that's always there just like a new world and you can always shoot at it instead of looking aiming at and shooting at players in battlefield 4 you always shoot just below the dorito because it is easy to see because you again targets tend to blend in very well especially in battlefield 4 they did so if you're playing lockers you would always go for the dorito now there's a very similar concept in this game as we're going for the nameplate i can't see this player at all but i can see his nameplate i'm shooting just below his nameplate so aside from having aim here, it is also allowing me to know exactly where to shoot. 
right below where his nameplate is and then uh, you can see I did a small micro adjustment here to correct myself on that powder burn at the end there and that leads me to that long range kill where I cannot even see him right below the nameplate boom it's that easy when it comes to aiming or well, sort of is the other part of playing a lot of uh, hours and just naturally building up your aim but when it comes to aiming in New World, that is an important factor. Alright, now the next section is going to cover positioning. Now, I kind of found it hard to find an OPR map online. Uh, so, the low quality is the best we're going to do. And I didn't want to jump into an OPR at 8.29am. Because they don't really pop at this time on my server. So, I'm just simply going to uh, mark out a position of how I would approach an OPR from beginning. Uh, to the middle point so starting at our spawn oh, I don't know why I'm in line mode uh, I'm just going to uh, that's probably why I'm gonna add smoothing so it's a little bit smoother but effectively I'm going to go as fast as I can to mid uh, and generally using your musket haste you tend to get there first if you do it right most of the time and I'm going to either go for ramparts if I see that my team has a lot of pressure so I'm going to effectively prior getting on top of the walls so I can have a power angle on healers uh, and people coming in through the door from the enemy side. Um, but if I notice that their team has presence in the fort, I'm actually going to go around one of the sides and start picking away the decks that tunnel vision through uh, to like shoot arrows through the point, right? Because there's always around two to three, maybe at least one decks that sort of just tunnel vision uh, shoots through the door here. And effectively, I'm going to come around... And I'm going to start picking on those guys, right? Generally, I prefer playing on this side, on the left uh, of this spawn, on the, uh, sorry, on the left of the spawn, on the right of the spawn that we're showcasing. Generally, because um, there's more cover over here than there is on this side, you've only got the ruins here, while on this side, you've got, you know, the rocks, the trees, and also these ruins here, especially, which are fantastic to fall back into. Sometimes I do get a little bit cocky and there's tends to be maybe a pre-made that will uh, corner me off. Um, generally speaking though, it's usually most of the time pretty safe because most of their forces are already inside the fort. But if we don't have, if we do have fort prisons, most of the enemies are going to be on the road. So it's probably not smart to flank and it's probably smarter to go inside and actually take rampart control and shoot people from on the walls. Um, where you can't really be hit unless it's other ranged. At that point, it just becomes an aim battle, a bit of a Call of Duty match. Uh, who's better at jiggle peeking and aiming? Uh, so that refer to the aim labs section uh, or aiming section when it comes to that. Uh, when it comes to small tips and tricks, you're going to be seeing clips shortly on the screen here. There's a few things that we need to focus on when it comes to uh, when it comes to basically playing musket. Is game sense is your best friend. It is more important than aim. Uh, and that is very, very, um, I'm deadly serious there. Aim is probably like number three when it comes to, uh, importance. Before that, it's actually, um, uh, I think it's, uh, what do you call it? It is, uh, what do you call it? Positioning. <laughs> so positioning is number one, or number two, sorry. And game sense, uh, and movement is number one. And priority, so this is sort of your priority when it comes to, uh, how to play musket game sense movement is the most important positioning number two and finally aim is the third one uh free looking is your best friend um that goes without saying you should never tunnel vision in new worlds that's a pretty bad thing to do all right so we're going to cover how to get your new world sense put into uh, uh aim lab sorry and also how to set everything else up and get to my playlist so the first thing you want to do is you want to open your browser and you want to go to a site called mousesensitivity.com uh, and while we're doing this we're going to go to our file explorer actually no it's easy i think if we go i believe it's ape data so we're going to do windows key plus r to bring up the run command and we're going to go ape data just like this it's going to bring you into roaming and then you're going to go ags new world you're going to go save data and then user settings.jav save it's going to bring up this massive uh, basically config for all your key bindings so this is where you change all your key bindings in the game um, and we're just simply going to go uh, over to edits we're going to hit find or we can do control f uh, we're going to type 
uh, mouse or I think it's camera in this game it's called camera sensitivity so again camera sensitivity yeah so you're looking for camera sensitivity multiplier this one right here this is the string you're looking for find next what do you mean it cannot be found that's a bunch of waffle that is an absolute bunch of waffle there we go so m underscore camera sensitivity multiplier and then next to it you're going to see a string called value this here is my in-game sensitivity now the fantastic thing about the config in new world is that we can also um tweak our sensitivity to a decimal place uh in outside of the game so in game you can only go like to basically rounds up to one which is kind of shit because when you adjust the slider in game it actually messes with decimal places so if you do 14 on one computer and then maybe you reinstall windows and you download new world and you put your sensitivity in it's actually going to uh, be a different sensitivity when you slide it to 14 which is really annoying and it's very inaccurate so the real way to get a one-to-one -one sensitivity of what you previously had or maybe you're converting from another game from your call of duty sense to a new world or a different third person shooter uh, maybe PUBG to new world for instance is a common one uh, the, the the best way to do it is get a screenshot of your neural sense save it somewhere and now you know what your value is so we're going to take this sensitivity value here we're just going to control c that we can exit out of this uh, jav save now we don't need to save anything because we're not altering any of our keybinds we're going to scroll down on mouse sensitivity.com to where it says convert from and we're going to hit new worlds and then in convert to we're going to hit aim lab it's aim lab with a space i think yeah, it is my bad so again oh, it actually remembers my clipboard so that is my sensitivity your mouse dpi this is uh what your you should i hope you know your mouse uh dpi uh but effectively uh, mine's 800 on my logitech g pro super light if you're unsure what your mouse sensitivity is uh if you have a gaming mouse generally you should have software for that and in that software you'll be able to configure your dpi and hopefully it will spit out a value so you know what it is um, and if you don't, uh, I believe there are DPI uh, calculators online. They can be a little bit finicky and may take some time to get used to um, or, or figure out, sorry. But besides the point, um, hopefully you know what your DPI is. Mine's 800. Uh, if you have a mouse that has pre-configured DPI settings, um, hopefully you know them or it's labeled on the box so you know what the settings are. Because I believe like the Super Light series, if you have a Super Light mouse, like Final Mouse. Oh, sorry, not a Super Light, a Final Mouse. Final Mouse only have tiers of DPI. I only believe it's their recent models that have web UI to change it, but uh, they effectively had preset configurations of like 400, 800, 1600, 2400, and those were the only ones you could flick through with a button on your mouse. Uh, but when it comes to my mouse, I'm 800, so hopefully you know what your uh, DPI is. Resolution, uh, I'm 1920 by 1080. Pop it in. If you're on 1440p uh, or 2K res, you'll be 2560 by 1440 uh, you'll probably know this already uh, and if you're on 4k i believe you are 3840 by 2560 um, i'm pretty sure that's accurate so again i'm going to go back to 1920 by 1080 however because i'm a 1080p fps gamer uh, frame to everything uh, we're going to go 70 fov that's the max in game or max in new world we're going to set this to in config file that's very important and then in aim lab we're going to hit our dpi we're going to hit our resolution as well uh, and our fov is going to be 70 in aim labs so i recommend uh 70 in aim labs it is a one-to-one -one. is the best you can get uh, and again this should be good in game for aim lab aim lab has a very good in-game customizer when it comes to sensitivity values and right below that it spits out our values so we're currently 59 centimeters for it pure or for a full 360 rotation in our game and it's going to give us our value here so this right here we can just click it and it'll copy it and then we're going to uh, take that sensitivity value of uh, 0 0.039 uh, and we're going to take that into aim lab we're going to go to the settings cog when you first download aim labs it's going to ask you to create an account i highly recommend creating an account so i can save all your configs scores data uh, and just settings in general um, there's also another thing I'll talk about here in a sec, but we'll get to that after we've done our sensitivity. Head down to controls. It's the game profiles aim lab sensitivity. This is where you're going to copy and paste that value we just got. Hit enter. We're going to hit uh, leave out FOV as 70. It should be like that default. Don't worry about aim down sight settings. We're purely going by hip. 
Uh, you don't want to be ADS when you're training. It can mess with muscle memory and all that kind of stuff, especially if you're ADSing and then you stop ADSing in aim labs. It really does mess with your muscle memory. I really want you to get used to your hip fire sensitivity rather than your ADS sensitivity. Uh, in my opinion, that is a, a priority because generally, it's a, with how sensitive, sensitivities have coefficients in games, New World does have a coefficient and doesn't tell you about it. But generally, the standard coefficient is 1.33 uh, from your hip fire to your ADS. So it's sort of a relative sensitivity, except it's an ADS version of that that matches your field of view. It's kind of a complicated equation, and I don't really need to explain it here because it does all the work behind the scenes. Effectively, all you need to do is paste your sensitivity in here, paste your FOV in here, or sorry, not paste your FOV in here, type 70 if it's not. Then we're going to head to, there's not really much else we need to change. Uh, oh, one thing, uh, you can do third person, third person or first person. I prefer a third person. It gives it the uh, FOV a bit more of a distortion that matches third person. And it also gives you a third person player model, which I find actually helps me uh, since I tend to be um, better at third person shooters. Uh, and it's also more accurate to uh, New World, of course. Uh, down to skins, uh, you can set your skins if you want. Uh, I generally, it, it, it defaults to holographic gloves. You can set that to normal gloves. Pistol uh, is the, you can turn the weapon off if you really want. I actually like using a weapon because it feels like I'm actually in a game and trying to achieve something. Uh, much like a lot of other aim trainer enthusiasts is, they sort of have this very almost uh, program or training-esque look. I actually feel, I like to feel like I'm actually playing a game while training. It's very important to me um, and it actually helps me play better or train better specifically. Now going up to visuals, you can probably leave all of this on default. I haven't changed any of it. Um, and graphics, I also haven't changed any of this other than setting full screen exclusive and my refresh rates uh, and also my uh, uh, display resolution. So if you're on 1440p or 4K, you'll set that in here. Frame rate, match your refresh rate. I'm, a, I'm on a 240 hertz monitor. Graphics I leave on fantastic. Aim trains are pretty lightweight applications. You can generally run whatever you want and it is fine. Now when it comes to the cross here is another thing I want to mention. In the description below I'm going to leave a link to a Google Doc or a Google Drive folder. And it's actually going to have the New World cross here in it. So I actually whipped this up for you guys. It's a PNG file and it gives you that dog shit New World cross here if you want to train with it. Now I'm going to chuck a quick little insert up on screen. Uh, that my monitor actually has a built-in crosshair that I use for bow. I don't need to use it for musket because I have this little center dot. That's more than enough for me to aim with. But when it comes to bow and, I, and that little circle, I can't stand it. So I actually have this little uh, button on my uh, monitor that I can turn on to have like a little crosshair red plus. Uh, a lot of monitors, uh, especially gaming monitors these days, have this feature built in. If you don't, there's an application on Steam called Crosshair X. This allows you to customize your crosshair to your heart's desire. It does cost a few dollars, but it is well worth the money. I know a lot of people that use them uh, across many games, especially a lot of pro players, because in general it's a fantastic application that allows you to get your true aim feel across all of the games you play that don't deliver the same crosshair depth as games like Valorant or Counter-Strike do. So anyways, once we've done all that, we've basically got all of our settings set up. You can mess with your audio if you want to, any of the other stuff in here. But again, we've got our controls set up, nothing else when you're changing there. We've got our skin set up, our crosshair set up. You can mess with your target colors if you're color blind or uh, you prefer different colors. I actually changed my red target to a bit more of an orange because red's a bit harsh on the eyes. Uh, but then all we need to do from here is we need to go to custom, we need to hit workshop. And in Workshop, you can actually type Mail Oreo New World or NW, and it should give you my playlist. When it loads. If it loads. Oh, well, there we go. And there we go. That's my uh, playlist I've created for you guys. You can simply hit that. Give it a like, of course. That'd be much appreciated. <laughs> uh, we're going to hit play, uh, and I'm just going to sort of show you briefly what's going on. So there's a main emphasis in this playlist is flicking and reaction time. So I really want you guys to build your hand-eye coordination. Uh, this is workout. Uh, work is out, outside, by the way. That's fine. I uh, hope you guys can ignore that. Um, but effectively, we're working on our hand-eye coordination, our flicking, and our, uh, our snappiness, effectively. So we're working on three core things. Tracking doesn't actually matter too much in New World, as you might think it does. 
New World is a very reaction based game when it comes to bow and musket. You need to have very fine micro adjustments and I've chosen three scenarios to do that. The total length of the playlist is six minutes. I recommend doing it twice so it's a 12 minutes of warm up before you start playing New World. It's pretty short. I don't want you guys to bore yourselves or over train yourselves. That is a very big problem in the aim training space is people just end up mindlessly grinding aim trainers for no reason when you should be spending that time in game aim trainers should be used as a foundation to get comfortable in your uh with your peripherals your sensitivity and most importantly build your general hand-eye coordination across games so we're going to hit click to continue here i'm just going to back out and on the side here you can see all six of these scenarios so there's a spider shot uh there is a motion shot and then a reflex shot spider uh spider shot is uh you you shoot a target and then you uh basically center your cross here again and you shoot a target and you shoot a target that's randomized around the screen so it's a very back and forth it, it focuses a lot on recentering your cross here uh, motion shot uh, is a focus on shooting a static target then a moving target so you're practicing a mobility flick this is something that i tend to do quite a lot in new worlds and then things and then the last one is the reflex shot this is a reaction time based scenario that is very flicky and relies on you to be very snappy between each target uh, and basically maximize your reaction time now there's a very important thing i want to uh, say focus on being precise before adding speed if you start slow naturally you're going to get more precise and then over time you're naturally just going to get faster because you're going to be more precise there's a very there's a very normal thing do not start off trying to go fast trying to go for some crazy score there's ultimately going to put you uh put heavy weights on you and effectively it's going to diminish uh your scores and effectively you're not going to get much out of the experience because you're not actually training actually training is being precise and then getting faster when you start to get faster effectively at being precise if that makes any sense so when it comes to these six scenarios there is a second scenario on every single one and these are actually called uh, ai scenarios so these effectively pick up on your weak spots in your previous scenario so from motion shot we go into motion shot ai motion shot ai actually effectively picks up on your weak spots where you're maybe maybe you have bad aiming on your left side so you're bad at flicking to your left and it will pick up on that and it'll actually do more targets or more specialized zones in that area to help you improve in that area faster and actually help you train in the areas that you're lacking uh, it's a pretty cool feature that i found out about from switching from kovacs to this uh, and there's again a lot more cool features in aim labs i didn't actually know about um, so effectively that is everything you need to know when it comes to aim labs uh, and i'll see you guys in the next section peace